from the King George's Estates in downtown Port St. Lucie, Florida. Good Monday evening, everybody, and welcome back to KC and 60 right here on DARPATV.com. Kevin Canessa here with you for the next hour or so, and to all of our regulars, I welcome you back to the program. And to anybody who may be here for the very first time, I welcome you to the program for the first time as well. I'm doing something that I don't always do, and I'm starting off today's show with a recorded monologue, and it's because the topic tonight that I'm going to begin with is something that is too important to miss anything. So I decided to write my monologue rather than to recite it off the top of my head. Now, I don't do that too often. I've only done it maybe two or three times in the history of this program, but I thought that this was too important not to do so. And it goes like this. It's 2014, and somehow the government of the state of Arizona believes it's 1914. Just a few days ago, the state legislature passed a bill that would allow any business in the state of Arizona to refuse service to gays and lesbians based on their religious convictions. So, simply put, if a gay couple walks into a deli to order a sandwich, the owner can refuse them and simply say, you're gay and I'm Catholic. We don't believe in same-sex marriage, so go get yourself a sandwich elsewhere. Does that sound familiar? Because it should. Remember, not too long ago in this country, it was lawful for a restaurant to have separate seating arrangements for black people? Remember when it was lawful not too long ago for bus companies to tell black riders to sit in the back? And if they were up front to give their seats to a white patron who wanted to sit down? Somehow we got past the bigotry of the 1950s. And yet right before our very eyes, the legislature of Arizona, already a laughing stock in this country, has decided it's okay now to discriminate against people because of whom they love. They say it's because no person should have to give up their religious beliefs to serve people their religion hates. And yet, just think of it for a moment. Can you recall the last time you read a passage in the Bible that said, no one shall be forced to serve food to two women who love each other? The simple truth is you won't find such a passage, and the politicians can hide all they want behind the curtain of religion. The truth of the matter is, this isn't about religion one bit. This isn't about protecting religious liberties. The Constitution already does that very clearly. This is only about conservative assholes whose bigotry is alive and well in 2014. This is about a group of disgusting white men who can't stand the reality that this country has changed. This is about conservative white men who constantly preach for less government, but only when it's convenient for them. And they're doing the exact opposite right here, right now, by discriminating against people simply because their love life is different from theirs. Folks, I've never been more embarrassed to be an American than I am right now, and it's because of this proposed law. Replace the words gay and lesbian in the law with black, Puerto Rican, Dominican, Irish, Italian, Latino, Latina, disabled, anything. Do you think for a second this would have been a debate, let alone a law? Then why, I can't help but wonder, do morons believe it's okay to propose a bill where gays and lesbians could now be told they're not welcome to buy a pair of shoes because the owners are Christian? We wouldn't have it, folks. There is no way we would. We would not have this kind of discrimination, and we shouldn't have it as it is now with gays and lesbians according to this law. There is no question the state of Arizona is a land in and of itself. We've seen that time and time again, especially with the immigration debate. And this proposed bill demonstrates how deeply out of touch the Republican Party is, not just in Arizona, but throughout the country. Republican Governor Jan Brewer has a chance to show America she's not the complete and utter nut job that she's shown herself to be previously. She says she'll decide by Friday whether to sign the bill into law. If she chooses not to sign the bill, my faith in humanity will be somewhat restored. If she goes ahead and signs it, it will be business as usual for the great grand old party. And if that happens, 
I'm not sure I'd ever be able to say I'm proud to be an American, because the truth is, I won't be. I won't be anything close to it. And that won't change one bit until these morons are voted out of office fast and forever. So I recorded that I was going to show it on a Monday show, but I didn't do a show yesterday, so you'll forgive me. I'm wearing something different today than I was yesterday, thank God, and I decided that I wanted to record it because recording something oftentimes I made sure that I didn't get everything that I, uh, I, I forget a lot of times. I, I often forget a lot of times. So the sidebar to this as we welcome in Irish Mike who we haven't seen in a long time how's it going Mike uh, good to see you please give my best to your brother Joe haven't seen Joe in a long time too uh, for those of you who are unaware Irish Mike is is regular Joe's brother uh, so it's always good to see these guys uh, the the sidebar to the story that I basically shared in the opening monologue and I didn't know this at the time because it wasn't known at the time having recorded that 24 hours ago, is that Governor Jan Brewer has decided that she's going or, or is leaning toward vetoing the bill so it won't go into effect. So she was on the fence with this from the very beginning, and it appears that she's decided not to vote, uh, to, not to sign the bill into law. So all of that so-called quote-unquote discrimination will not be able to uh, go into effect. And Restaurant owners can't discriminate against who they serve and, and things of that nature. But this has caused a lot of trouble already because these lawmakers have done themselves a very big injustice. The, the, the backlash has been tremendous to the point where there are a lot of business owners who have put up signs that say, uh, we ref reserve the right to refuse to serve members of the Arizona legislature. Maddie says, and by the way, no matter what, it means I couldn't care less as long as you aren't harming me. Exactly. That's the truth of the matter. That, that is the truth of the matter. It, it, it just doesn't make sense. It, it doesn't make sense that these guys are trying to say it's to protect religious freedom. The Constitution does that. The Constitution guarantees that people can practice their religion without interference from the government. But the truth is, you know, how cold-hearted do you have to be? How heartless do you have to be? How out of touch with reality do you have to be if you're a business owner and you would want to turn away business? Seriously. Okay, now, uh, Joel says in the chat room, just try to get to everything in the chat room, uh, my, my dear friend Joel the Mouth, McGurk, in Arizona, they could lose the Super Bowl for the law. Uh, about gaining ba gay marriage. That's interesting. That's interesting. This, this is a little different. This is not about necessarily the marriage element. This is simply the, 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 the bottom line would have been that if it passed, and it, again, looks like it's not going to pass, if you or I decided we... I, I think the easiest one to use for an example is owned a bakery, okay? And let's say this lesbian couple comes in and they decide that they're getting married and they want you to make a cake to celebrate their marriage or something that they'd use at their wedding. They would ac absolutely be able to, the business owner under this law, say, sorry, take your business elsewhere. Our religion precludes us from making a cake for you. Okay? Jim says, how would they even know someone is unless they tell you? Well, I, mean, I just gave you an example of where it would be noticed. You know, I mean, I think that that would be the biggest example. That's what's happened uh, already in the past where they, 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 we've seen instances like this with wedding photographers, wedding cake bakers, and things like that. In, in essence, Jim is right, though. I mean, for the most part, a lot of businesses, you know, there's, you know it's, it's, it's not something you ask, I don't think, your customers. Uh, in general, but generally speaking, you're right. But the bottom line is, it doesn't matter. Because if the law had been on the books, at some point in time, if a business owner wanted to ask, or wanted to say, you know, get the hell out of my store, I don't want you in here, they could have. But Jan Brewer, who is normally pretty pretty conservative, has said that she found flaws in the law and she's not going to, uh, she's not going to sign it. So we'll see if she actually holds to her word. I think she has until Friday to make a decision whether to 
approve it and sign it into law or to veto the bill and uh, basically make it move and from as I said what I've understood is that she's decided that she's not going to, to vote for it but the, the thing that bothers me perhaps even more about this let's take the the topic aside and not even worry about what the topic is but think about what's going on in this country right now in the state of Arizona I wish Bill Scarterfield were here right now because he could attest to this. There's a, the big, big issues, of course, in Arizona are immigration because of the borders. I'm sure unemployment would fit into that category as well. Jobs, creation of uh, fixing infrastructure, highways, and things of that nature. The legislature has a lot to do, a lot that they really need to do, and they wasted several weeks on this. And they had a lot of debate about it. And they had a lot of people show up in support and against the bill. With so many things happening, why are these conservative politicians looking to legislate what happens in the bedroom or thereafter? I just don't get it. Because you and I know, okay, whether, it doesn't matter whether you're conservative-leaning, whether you're liberal like me, or you're in the middle, that the, the Republican Party has said, for since I was a kid at least, and perhaps more than likely even longer than that, that one of the problems that they have with the federal government is that there is too much government. The government interferes. Libertarians will always say this. Listen, I don't care what people do in the privacy of their home. Just don't involve me. Leave me alone. Let the law be what it is from the Constitution. We'll just go. We'll be happy. We'll be merry. So what Joe does, Joe Schmo does in his home doesn't affect me at all. As long as you let me carry my guns and all that other stuff, okay? And yet, on topics like this, the Republican Party loves to legislate. That's what they get involved in. Less government except when we need it. That's the bottom line. That's what it tur turns into, and that's what it comes down to. Less government unless it's convenient for us. And I suppose to a degree that's so certainly the case with the Democrats, too. More government, and we'll cut it when it's convenient for us, fine. But the bottom line is there's so many more pressing issues in this country, and especially in the state of Arizona, that it's, just a, it's, it's a sad commentary that they wasted this much time and energy and money on such a f ridiculously stupid bill that really had no business being on, in, uh, enacted. And I'm just so glad to hear that Brewer, the governor of the state of Arizona, is, is more than likely going to veto it. Joel in the chat room says, because that's what is important in this country, with an LOL. Yeah, really. It's, it's really remarkable. They want to legislate the, the Republican Party so much about what happens in the bedroom and in the privacy of your own home. It's the only time they want the government really involved. And they're usually the ones involved in sexual scandals. Larry Craig, ring a bell? <laughs> you know? The, the ones who preach moral high ground all the time, the moral high ground all the time, are always the ones who tend to find a way to be involved in some kind of scandal with a hooker or with a prostitute or something crazy. It's just the way it is. And I think there's a great irony in that, too. Anytime a Republican who preaches family values is involved in a scandal like this, it kind of just makes me smile. God forgive me, but it's the truth. It does. So that's where it stands. I'll certainly keep you updated on whether the bill is signed into law, whether it's vetoed by the governor of Arizona, Jan Brewer. We'll see what comes of it, and we should know something by Friday. So that means for the purposes of this program, we'll know something by Monday, Tuesday at the latest. It is 15 minutes past the hour. Knessa here with you on KC in 60 on this Tuesday evening, coming to you live from Port St. Lucie, Florida. Another beautiful day here in the southeast. Nice 79 degree day. Going to be in the 50s tonight. It'll be very, very chilly. Almost time to put the heat on, I guess, when it gets down into the 50s. And it's a really thriving place right now. It's amazing that, you know, the, the busy months here uh, this is a very crazy month uh, this month because the Mets are in town and it's uh, it's the players are in town people come from all over the country to see spring training it's 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 really something I didn't realize until I got here and of course hanging out with Joel the other day at the hotel I got to see it firsthand that there are really people from all over the place who will come for a week just to see spring training just to see games that don't count for a team 
that doesn't count either. That's the even funnier part. It's like it's like if you live in California, paying a couple hundred bucks, getting a hotel, spending a couple grand in total to go see like little league baseball across the country. That's the equivalent of it. That's how bad the Mets are. That's how bad this season is going to be again. Unbelievable, even though this kid Noah Syndergaard seems to be the real deal. Bumped into him. Didn't know it was him for sure. But this kid is big. He is tall. He is a big dude. Going to be a good pitcher in a couple of years. Doesn't do much for 2014, though, does it now? So, we'll see. I just thought I would let you know what was going on in Port St. Lucie. So, sorry, okay? I just wanted to tell you what was going on here. That's fine, okay? It's just, a, just what happens here in Florida in the month of April. April. February and March. Uh, 17 past the hour. And folks, I've been talking to you a lot about Secure Haze over the last couple of weeks. And you're probably getting tired of hearing me say it, but if it weren't for Secure Haze, we wouldn't be on the air here right now. And I want you to t- do me this favor if you haven't yet. Give it a chance. Click on the banner ads that are to the left and to the right of the player here on the main page of DARPATV.com. It'll take you to SecureHaze.com. We will be able to download either a Mac or a PC version of the program if you're using a computer. Or it'll, you'll be able to download from the iTunes store an iPhone version or from the Google Play store an Android version. Now, you've all used Skype at some point or another. I understand that. But the thing that most people don't understand about Skype is that it's not secure. They say it has encryption, and it may have a minuscule amount of encryption involved, but the encryption is not enough to keep your communication safe. What Secure Haze does is it encrypts all your video calls, audio calls, IMs, and it lets you send files totally encrypted. The best 20 hackers in the world couldn't all get together and find a way to snoop on your conversations. So it is Skype, but times 500 million. That's how much stronger and better a program this is. And if you value your privacy, Secure Haze is going to give it. Take a look at it today when you get a chance by clicking on the banner or logging on to www.securehaze.com. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, a lot more to get into, including me singing and some dramatic news from around the country. Uh, This is something that I think you're certainly going to want to see. But before we go out to the commercial break, I just wanted to show you this little program from KC and 60, this little promo, rather, from the other day. Take a look at this. The following contains sounds that may be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is strongly advised. You've heard him speaking for years as host of KC and 60 on DARPA TV, but you've rarely heard him sing. That is, until now. Time Life Records presents Kevin Canessa Sings the Tunes. Just keep your eye on that puck and don't get down on your luck. It's the Rangers' victory song. Oh, Canada. Our home and native land, true patriot love in all our sons' command. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north strong and free. From (laughs) you asked for it, and I gave it to you. You get these two great classics and one more surprise. Order today. Call 1-800-HEADACHE now. Only $29.95 Canadian dollars. Hey everybody, it's Kevin Canessi here from KC and 60 here on DARPATV.com and I want to tell you a little bit about It is uh, 21 past the hour, Canessa back with you here on KC and 60 and a couple of shows ago we just 
I was in another world. I was on another planet, and I decided to do a little uh, one of those impressions of how the news is discussed and presented in the United Kingdom, that real dramatic flair that it gets, you know, like the most mundane thing. So I've decided to come up with a new segment, and I put together two segments, and that's called Kevin Canessa Reads the News Like They Do in the UK. So without any further ado, here is the first of two coming up in a row. It's time for Kevin Canessa makes the mundane news sound very dramatic like they do in England. With the push of a button, everything changed. The upper rim of the Metrodome collapsed to the ground. The dust was incomparable. It rose into the air and then into the neighborhoods of Minneapolis, Minnesota. And the people of the neighborhoods there were petrified with what they saw. Many believed they'd become poisoned with a form or another of asbestos. Health officials refused to comment on whether the people of Minnesota were safe from this collapse. Nigel Robinson, BBC News, Minneapolis, Minnesota, in America. So that's the first one, and of course, here is another one with a story out of Las Vegas. It's time for Kevin Canessa makes the mundane news sound very dramatic, like they do in England. We're reporting live from this petrol station in Las Vegas, Nevada. Notice this man wearing a red sweatshirt. He's tapped by this car. Then he punches the car. And then the car runs him over. You'll notice the man just drives away. Watch in slow motion as he punches the car again, only to be run down. The man is in excruciating pain on the ground. The people around do nothing. Now here it is, up close. There's the punch, the run over, and the man's hat has gone underneath that red truck. The workers go after the man who drove the car over this poor gentleman, and 12 seconds later, this guy gets out and does absolutely nothing. Now here's a view from inside the petrol station. You'll notice the man get hit again. Nigel Robinson, BBC News, Las Vegas. So there it is, a new segment for KC and 60, reading the news very dramatically, even if it is a basic mundane story. And I don't like, I, I just love the way they do it. I really do. They could, they really make a cat getting stuck in a tree sound something that could be perhaps the end of the world. And that's what I've always loved about the Beebs, as they call it. Maddie taught me that the other day. They call, the BBC is the Beebs, not Justin Bieber, but it is the Beebs. Uh, so... Is, is he really? <laughs> oh, that's good to know. Uh, I, I just, I, I never understood why, why it is that way, but it is just wonderful. But Maddie, thank you for introducing me to the term Beebs. I do love that uh, term. It is a, a good one. So now how about this? Changing topics here, changing gears a little bit. Forgiveness is a, is a, is a very difficult topic. And as somebody who, thank God, has never had to forgive somebody who either murdered someone in my family or who was responsible for a drunken driving accident or a drink drive accident that killed a member of my family, I consider myself very fortunate for that, that I've never had to experience it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this video of a woman whose child was killed by a drunken driver who then got a chance to speak face-to-face -to, -face to the guy who committed the crime. Now, on the surface, it seems like, eh, it's not that big a deal here, but I actually think that this is an exploitation of significant proportions. And I also think there's a little bit more to this that doesn't meet the eye that I want to discuss, but watch the video first. Keep in mind, this is the mother of, uh, I'm sorry, the child wasn't killed in this case. The child has uh, been in a six-year coma since. 
but she did have the opportunity to confront the guy who was behind the wheel at the time. So take a look at this, and I'll discuss it on the other side of the video. Well, he says he's remorseful, but she won't forgive. 24 hours ago, an Arlington mother confronted the man who apologized for driving drunk, causing a crash that left Ludna Cater's son nearly brain dead. Five years of pent-up anger, pain, sadness, unleashed in minutes. And tonight, Ludna Cater talks about getting her chance to face Stuart Richardson in jail. Now, since we first showed you that raw, spontaneous confrontation last night, you've sent us dozens of comments. Some praised Lubna Cater's strength and courage. Others criticized our agreeing to her request to have our camera in the room, telling us her outpouring of emotion should have been private. Lubna wanted us to show the emotional wreckage as a victim lives. It may be in a way we've never been able to show it. So did confronting the source of her pain make any difference? Channel 8's Jim Douglas live tonight with the story. Jim? Well, it will definitely make a difference, John, because Mothers Against Drunk Driving told us this afternoon they're going to start using this video in their programs. They think it will be a powerful tool. And Abdullah Cater's mom told me that she's grateful that she finally got to say some things to a man who needed to hear them. Five years after a DWI crash left six-year-old Abdallah Cater like this, Stuart Richardson still awaits trial. It's delayed by complicated legal issues. But on the anniversary of the crash, he surprisingly agreed to let Abdallah's mom finally have her say. The spontaneous rage was hard to witness. It's been five years today. Five years. My son is dying every single day. Lubna Cater didn't know if he would see her, but she wanted us there if he did. We've covered their nightmare from the beginning. I'm never going to forgive you. Never. Richardson repeatedly told her he was sorry. Lubna left and collapsed in tears. Afterward, though, she told us she was grateful for the chance to stand up for her child. There's so many more things I wanted to tell him about my son, the things that he goes through daily, but a man like him would, would never feel like stuff like this. Many who saw this raw scene said only forgiveness will bring her peace. I don't think there, there will ever be peace with this man. I mean, I, could, I, tried, I tried so many times to, to convince myself to forgive him because it's not going to change anything, but I just, the minute I saw him, I just saw the devil in him. Why did you do it? Why did you face her? Because I made a mistake and I want that family to know that I'm, I'm trying to stand up for my mistake to let them know that I love them and I'm very sorry for what happened. And Abdallah Cater's mom wants him and everyone else to know that three times the legal limit is not a mistake, that what's left of her son is not a mistake, and that more than 500 lives damaged or lost to drunk driving in North Texas just since their crash are not mistakes. About an hour after she confronted Stuart Richardson, Lubna told me that she did feel better. It's just a start, but it's more than she had. Live in our Fort Worth newsroom, Jim Douglas, Channel 8 News. Exploitation? No question. No question. And I'm going to say something, I think, right now that's going to make me seem very cold, very crass, and very heartless. And I don't want that to be the case, but I think it's probably going to come across that way. I find that any human being who would get behind the wheel of a vehicle, having, having had something to drink prior to that, it, it, it's crazy. Uh, it's, 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 it's nuts. I'll use James, James Graham's uh, uh, particular line for this one. I can't imagine how somebody with half a brain would get drunk and then get behind the wheel of a car and drive and think that it's okay to do such a thing. But then I see a case like this, an awful case, a terrible case, where a young child will never, ever be able to get to live the life he deserved to live. And no mother, no mother should ever, ever, ever have to go through the pain of watching their child become comatose irreversibly and know that there's no way he's going to ever snap out of it. No way. But I find a lot of fault here with a couple of things. Number one, 
and look, I've been the f- I've shown on this program pictures and videos of body parts, hands, legs, arms, feet from 9/11 that were never shown on TV before. So I can ac- you can accuse me if you want of being a hypocrite because I have exploited things here for the purpose of demonstrating a point on numerous occasions, especially when it comes to 9-11. But I think it was wrong of this news station in Texas to exploit this confrontation that they were probably hoping would be a big-time blow-up or a big-time scream fest, and that's precisely what what, what happened. This guy is doing something that he's not required by law to do, and that was allowing her to sit down and basically scream at him for however long she wanted because of the stupid mistake he made. And and not only did he make a stupid mistake, he made it really badly three times the, the legal limit. If your blood alcohol content is .24, how you could even conscientiously make the decision to drive drunk doesn't make any sense because nothing is really jiving if your blood alcohol content is 0.24. But for them to set this up with the cameras there with the hopes that she'd explode, just don't I, I don't understand that. And I don't like what they did. And I also find that what one of the things that this mother said was pretty unfortunate. She said that when she saw his face, she saw the devil. Now, again, 0.24, three times the limit, put her son in this irreversible state of of mind. The guy's an ass. The guy's a jerk for doing what he did. But the chances are, as is often the case with a lot of people who are involved in drunk driving, they made one bad decision, and they paid for it. I don't know if that necessarily equates to seeing the devil incarnate, but do you see how easy it could be to go from living a productive life? I don't know what kind of life this guy lived before he did what he did. But let's just say, you know, Maddie says in the chat room, I love a drink, but I, uh, I'm even, uh, even I'm not that stupid. Okay, let's, Maddie's a great guy, a great example. You know, he does enjoy his drink. And let's just say one day he just doesn't realize it and he gets behind the wheel and he does it and he gets a drunken driving charge, okay? God forbid, this is never gonna happen. But one simple mistake one day in your life can change it all. And unfortunately I think what society does, I think this is the same in the UK as it would be here in the United States, and that is that the public will always remember that one person for the one stupid mistake that they made. And unfortunately, that does not necessarily mean that the person is a devil or is the devil incarnate, but it's just the way things happen. So, bad job out of that news station, and perhaps I'm just as guilty for replaying it, but again, it's for illustrative purposes. It's certainly not to sell the show or to get people to watch the show any more than they need to, any less than they need to, but it segues into the next segment of something that I want to talk to uh, you guys about, and that's when military members uh, come home and the cameras are hiding, right? Okay, you know, you see this in the, and the military members are going to surprise either their uh, spouse or their children when they come home. Another exploitation. And we see this 50 times a week, whether it's on CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, The Beeb, whatever it is that you watch for to get your news source. And it's almost like a regular segment on a lot of shows here when you see uh, the kids hugging mom or dad who spent six months away in Kuwait or in uh, uh, Iraq or wherever it is. And that's another question I ask. Is this becoming exploitive as well, exploitatious, or whatever the heck the word is, I can't even think of it. They're great stories sometimes, they really are, but do we have to continuously show these videos of young kids who break down and cry when they see their father or their mother for the first time in six months, shouldn't that be a private moment? Does it have to be out in the public? Does everything have to be a media event? This one, I will, uh, I, I will admit, though, th- th- this uh, was a, probably the best reaction I've ever seen 
from a return home. But we'll talk about it on the other side. This is, uh, I forget what state. I'm Cotina Jenkins Sellers, and this is my husband, Michael Sellers. We're here today to surprise our youngest son, Derek, at his basketball game. I'm very excited. I just landed about an hour ago, so this is really special. I appreciate you all doing this. I thank you. Thank you. And thank you for your service. He has no idea that I'm coming. I'm a little nervous. I haven't seen Derek in about eight months. I missed all the football season. Of course, I couldn't be there because I was deployed. I missed the holidays. He's going to be shooting on that basket over there. So I'm just going to walk up to him. Whenever they're ready. So the plan is to call a fake tech on the coach, and then we're going to have Derek go out to the line um, for two free throws, and then that's when we'll have his mom come from behind and then with the surprise. I'm nervous because I don't know what his reaction is going to be. <laughs> I'm thinking, he say, Mommy, and give me a hug. You know, we're at a basketball game. His friends are here. Girls are here. Maybe he'll cry, but then he'll be mad at me. Oh, that's all right, Derek. cried a little bit, but that's okay. That was his natural reaction. That was Derek. And that's really the reaction I thought he would have. I want to miss you. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, get <you're> back. <laughs> Nice. His reaction was great. Uh, I, I, in fact, I think it was one of the better reactions I've seen in a long time. And there's one like this one. This is a, a military mother who is uh, still overseas, but they surprised the kid in another way. Take a look at this one. Hi, everybody. We met up with eight-year-old Sean and his grandparents, Chris and Barry, in the lobby. While behind the scenes, engineers, producers, and directors worked furiously to get things ready. Wearing his mother's dog tags, we gave Sean the grand tour. This is how we shoot the news. From cameras to news vehicles and live trucks, with our executive producer, Doris Lewis, crafting a pretend script. Hi, I am Sean Green. All the while, in the back room, more fine tuning. <laughs> Hello, my name is Robert from San Diego. By now, we put Sean in the anchor chair and wired him up. Can you hear anything in there? <laughs> yeah. Again, he thinks he's just going to read a little bit of his script. So with the teleprompter rolling. Hi, I am Sean Green. When he finished, Hi. director Eddie Ray signaled the satellite from Afghanistan was ready. Turn to your left and see who's over there. Mom? Live from Afghanistan, Major Shannon Green, Sean's mom. Major Green is the executive officer for the Regional Command Southwest in Afghanistan. She's also the intelligence officer for Marine Air Ground Units. Happy Valentine's Day, sweetheart. But for Valentine's Day, she's mom. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day, mom. <laughs> You know, holidays are always hard. Especially hard on an eight-year-old boy whose mom is so far away. Well, all I got to say is... Are you... I love you, Mom. Believe me when I tell you, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. I love you, Mom. I love you too, Sean. Okay, so am I the big old ogre here for being upset that they still do this and that they make the kid get upset on national television? Does that make me bad? Okay, you see, Mama says, why are they doing this to the kid? Right, I mean, oh my goodness. First of all, we're agreeing here. We're agreeing on something, Mama. So this is a great moment. Why is it necessary to put the kid on TV like that to reunite him with his mother. Why can't it just be in there in his home? I understand that, you know, it helps with the ratings and things like that, but that could be traumatic to a child, especially when a kid breaks down like that. And I've seen in instances where it's been 10 times worse than that. I just don't get it. I just don't get it. I, I, I wish that these things would stop on the TV news. I really believe it's time. It's just not right what they do to these kids. And, and you know, the parents are involved, so I, to a degree you can't really slam it. 
because if the parents didn't want it to happen, it wouldn't happen. But the truth of the matter is, these kids deserve better than this. And I can't believe, Pratika, that Mama and I are actually agreeing on something. It is just an unbelievable day. We have agreed on a couple of things in the last couple of weeks. So I'm starting to worry that maybe it's time, like, like it's the apocalypse is coming here with all this agreement and stuff. So I have to be careful. Uh, but yeah, this. But there are some people who turn around and say, "Oh, just let it be. It's no big deal. It's just kids getting reunited with their parents," and I don't agree with that. And I and I I can't really say this wholeheartedly because I'm not a parent. But I would never, you know, like the, you know, let, let, I'll use Joel as an example here. Like if Joel went away to, to Iraq and came back, and Carter and Paige were sitting around. You know, and all the cameras were there. You know, that should be a private moment when you reunite with your family members. Instead, you got people yelling, screaming, and the world's got to see it. So who knows? Hey, Bit, my sister from another mother, Eden Queens, good to see you. And I know I still owe you a phone call. I have a phone phobia, as Jim Graham will be able to tell you. I hate the phone. I hate answering the phone. I hate making calls. But I do really want to catch up with you, and I'm so sorry about that. So you forgive me, I hope. Uh, but Jimmy Graham, if you're still here, please tell uh, a little bit about my this, how much I hate the phone. Bail, bail me out here, please. 42 past the hour. Uh, thank you, Jimmy. I owe you one. Uh, <laughs> and uh, what was I going to say? I don't know. Now I've got sidetracked here all of a sudden. I don't know why this happens. Every so often when I turn to the chat room, it just completely throws me off, and I don't remember what I was going to say next. But at any rate, I'm going to take a short break. When we come back, there's just a few more things that I do want to get to, including the uh, principal who decided to drag her kindergart uh, the, uh, the kindergartners. Like, hello, a principal uh, dragging their child from their hair. I I, I, I still can't believe that this is the truth but it really really is so uh we'll take this short break and we'll come back and we'll get to that right here on kc and 60 and in case you missed it i want you all to go out and buy this album today the following contains sounds that may be disturbing to some viewers viewer discretion is strongly advised you've heard him speaking for years as host of kc and 60 on darpa tv but you've rarely heard him sing that is until now Time Life Records presents Kevin Canessa Sings the Tunes. Just keep your eye on that puck and don't get down on your luck. It's the Rangers victory song. Oh, Canada, our home and native land. True patriot love in all our sons' command. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north strong and free. From <laughs> You asked for it, and I gave it to you. You get these two great classics and one more surprise. Order today. Call 1-800-HEADACHE now. Only twenty nine ninety five Canadian dollars. It is uh, 48 past the hour. Knessa back with you here on KC in 60, and there's a whole bunch of things going on in the chat room. Uh, the, the old BK commercials were great, and McDonald's, the, the crazy uniforms with the sailboat hats that they used to wear they're, they're on the top of their brown uniforms at Burger King. Uh, some very, very interesting things. Uh, those old commercials are great, and YouTube is great for that stuff. They, they're all over the place. And everywhere you go, you, you, the, anytime I, I sometimes spend too much time taking a look at them because they are so good, some of the old commercials. Uh, in the chat room is Mawa, and I want everybody to know that coming up on Friday at uh, 7 or 8, I can't remember, Mawa, you tell us, Mawa will be doing her show here on DARPATV.com uh, called Live Feed USA. I missed it last week. But uh, I should be able to... Oh, Thursday. It's scheduled for Friday, so I hope you know that. Take a look at it. I think you have the wrong date on there. The last I saw, at least, it was scheduled for Friday. But it will be a guest regular time on Thursday. Uh, so I was wondering what that was all about. 8 to 9 p.m. on Thursday. I think she misprogrammed it and, and uh, uh, chose the date for Friday instead of Thursday. But she can go back and fix that. Just change it by one. It'll be fine. It'll be very easy. We forgive her for putting the wrong date. It's okay. It happens periodically. Uh, let's see. Uh, Annie says, um, 
she just got this message from Derek. Uh, Derek Ammons, yeah. Uh, is there a phone number that you can call in? Yes, uh, the phone number to call in, I, and I always forget to give it out. I forgot about the phone. If you don't have a webcam, you can certainly do this. Call 505-6KC-60. 505-6KC-60. And I'm not 100% sure if I have it set up. And, uh, uh, so if it doesn't work this time, Derek, I will certainly reserve some time for you the next show. But I don't remember if I set it up uh, yet uh, for today because I often forget that I do have the capability of piping the phone over here. Yep. But that's the thing. You really uh, you don't even need to have um, a webcam. If you have a microphone and, and a set of headphones, just click on the lips and use the microphone to do that. It's a, it's a lot easier than using the phone, but some people just don't have either one or if they're in a location where they can't. Or if Derek has a mobile phone, he can use his, his droid phone to call in as well if he has a droid phone. So it, you really can do that. Um, maybe someday even on the iPhone. Maybe, maybe. So we will see, of course. Now, I had mentioned before we went to the break that... There's this principal who was accused of dragging uh, some kindergartners. I, I, I just, I, he, he, when I saw it, I just didn't think I was seeing anything, but it, I believe it's true. I believe this is a real, because there are actually uh, some videos to go with it. So without any further ado, here's the, here's the news story, if I could just find it, because I always forget what I name things, and we'll talk about it on the other side. Take a look at this. The images just released are shocking. A woman identified as former principal Carmen Perez Dixon drags a kindergartner out of a classroom by the leg. Even though the child lays motionless on the ground and doesn't appear to fight back, the principal picks the girl up by the arm and leg before dropping the student on the floor. She then picks the girl up again and appears to grab her by the hair or hood. It actually was a little, little painful for me as a parent. But despite the disturbing video from spring 2012 going public for the first time Friday, that former principal of Tisdale School still works for the district, even though her... She's got a job. She's got a job. They gave her a job. They gave her a job. Bosses say she should be fired. The board did not exactly agree with us. Um... You know, so the action that was taken was not what we recommended. If I heard the same evidence and we saw the same video today, um, we would support the same recommendation that we made at that time. Bridgeport Public Schools Chief Administrative Officer Sandra Case says the recommendation was to fire the principal who is shown in a second video dragging another kindergartner. Dixon was suspended for six months without pay, but instead of losing her job, the Board of Ed is giving her another one, this time as an administrator. You're not supposed to put your hand on somebody else's child. Dixon's attorney says her client's actions were within the Board of Ed policy to use reasonable force and points out the board issued a written decision stating Dixon's actions did not rise to the level of termination. Now, according to Dixon's attorney, those videos were supposed to be confidential. They were released to local news stations by the parents of the kindergartners in the video. But Dixon's attorney says she's now calling for an investigation into how they were made public. In Bridgeport, Jackie Beckford, News 4 New York. I don't care what the circumstances are. I don't care what the policy is. What we just saw should not be tolerated at all. Not only should this woman not have been given another job, she should be ready to go to prison right now. I mean, I, I, I don't get it. I don't understand how she got away with this. Imagine that. I mean, Mama is telling us a story about in her school district up in uh, northwest New Jersey, principal of one of our schools was moved from one to another, still remaining principal. The principal had some issues with employees, intimidation, and uh, she says that the education union is one big blood-sucking tick, and she's right. I mean, that's an example right there of where this woman's being protected. She grabbed the kids and dragged them along the floor. I don't care how much that kid or those kids involved were yelling and screaming and throwing their arms in what direction. You don't do it. 
You don't do it. And I come from the generation that just got the tail end for the first couple of years of my education where corporal punishment was still permitted. I remember in first grade, there was a woman, uh, I had a woman, well, woman, because of course all nuns are women, a nun who, when a kid would act up, she'd grab them by their shirt and shake them to calm them down. And yet it would just do the complete opposite. Seriously, imagine if that was your kid for one second. The outrage. I, I mean, how the, the school board could look at themselves in the mirror and say, we made the right decision by keeping her on, but in another position is beyond me. And these are the people who get reelected every year, too. School board election, come November or come April, wherever it is, that's what happens. It's just mind-boggling. It, it is truly mind-boggling. So I wanted you guys to see that, especially uh, for the parents out there, because... Uh, I'm sure there are many more cases like this that we don't hear about, but every, in every single case, I don't care what the circumstance is in, you err on the side of caution, and it is the, the side of the student that you must take there. There is no excuse for what that woman did, and what a, a disgrace it is that she indeed got away with it. It is 58 minutes past the hour, and that is going to do it for this edition of KC and 60. I want to thank each and every one of you for stopping by tonight and a special thanks of course to eugene who is hanging out with maddie and uh, eugene thank you so much for coming by and of course a special welcome back to irish mike who we haven't seen in a while it's always good to see irish mike and bit and annie and everybody because i don't want to go through the litany of names i'm gonna forget somebody i'll be back tomorrow night same time and i hope you'll stay tuned for chop shop tv which is coming up right after this here on DARPATV.com. So from Port St. Lucie, Florida, Canessa signing off for now. We'll see you back here very, very soon. Good night, everybody.